Good morning. It is good for us to be gathered here this morning, both in person and those who join us online. A few announcements. I just want to point out, look through your announcement page. There's a number of things coming up. Particularly, I want to remind you all that the church office is closed tomorrow. There's no quilting this week. It's just kind of a laid back, quiet week here at the church. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other things happening here in the coming weeks and in our community. Um, today is Pentecost. You'll see a lot of red and there was a little bit of things that will be a little different today because of it being Pentecost, including balloons. Love adding a little extra in here. Also note that next week is Holy Trinity Sunday. So it's a day where we think about and contemplate the mystery of the Holy Trinity. And I know that it says in here that the summer sermon series, Can I Ask That? Asking the hard faith questions. You won't see the basket out there because I've been working on getting together what our summer will look like with those questions. You all have great questions. I'm excited for us to dive into these questions together this summer. And actually, some of your questions fit perfectly with next week, with it being Holy Trinity Sunday. So we're going to start a little early. Um, but if you still have any questions, you can still hand them to me today. But today is the last day, just so that I can fully get everything together for the summer. No, the answers are not listed in next month's builder. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a bingo card there's a bingo card in this month's builder if you didn't get it let me know but if you want to see it it's different ways that you can possibly see God in your surroundings so be it as a time when you're with your family or your friends or when you meet someone new or you're dealing with someone you don't particularly get along with. But just take those times to think about where you see God in those moments. With that, I invite you to stand as you are able as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean. Quench our thirst and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen.
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from 
the book of Acts, starting at chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medeas, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power, and all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, and the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great wide, and the swarms they do not know. Living things are small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them Give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their strength, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You 
touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God. words of mine please God I will rejoice in the Lord the second reading is taken from first Corinthians no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance, the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. And to another, working of miracles. And to another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of those tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, all one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Will you please pray with me? Oh God, may the words spoken and the words heard be your words, for only when you speak do we have life. Amen. So today is the day where we can shout Happy birthday! Not to an individual or a group of individuals. Today is Pentecost, affectionately known as the birthday of the church. So I could make you all sing happy birthday to the church, but I won't. I know the choir has some good harmony. But today on Pentecost, this is the day that we celebrate the coming of the promised Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes to shake things up. 
Today is a day that we actually spend some time pondering the Holy Spirit, the least understood, the least spoken about person of the Holy Trinity. Don't worry, we'll talk some more next week. Today is a chance to especially pay attention to the way she moves and blows through the church and the world. And so we get two readings today about the coming of the Holy Spirit. The reading from Acts and the reading from John. And they give two very different ideas about the Holy Spirit and how she came to the disciples. In John, we hear that Jesus is with them in the room where it happens, that night of the resurrection. And Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, and then proceeds to breathe on them, receive the Holy Spirit. I hear that phrase just a little bit differently in this post-pandemic world. But we're not focusing on that story. We're going to focus on Acts and that longer story that we know of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we hear that the scene starts that it is Pentecost. For before it was the day that Christians celebrate as the coming of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost was a Jewish festival. It was also known as the Festival of Weeks. It happened seven weeks or 50 days after Passover, just like Pentecost, 50. But this is one of the three festivals where Jewish people would make pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And hence the reason why there's Jewish people in Jerusalem from all over the then known world. They gathered for Pentecost, a harvest festival where families would bring the first fruits in anticipation of God blessing the remainder of the harvest. There is also a connection to the day that commemorates the Israelites receiving the Torah, the law. It's a festival of hearing about the gifts of God. And so it was as the apostles gathered together for this festival, as they gathered together to celebrate God's gifts, that God shows up in the promised Holy Spirit. Now, the disciples, they knew Jesus had promised the Holy Spirit. From what we know of the story here in Acts, Jesus does not exactly say when the Holy Spirit will come, or how the Holy Spirit will come. But if we turn back to chapter 1, we hear Jesus post-resurrection, but pre-ascension say that they will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And just after that, but you will receive power from when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And then it's with those words that Jesus ascends. He's lifted up out of there. The disciples have the promise of the Holy Spirit. But to what we know, none of the understanding of how or when. But here we are. The apostles gathered for this festival when suddenly there came a sound like a loud rush of not just wind, but violent wind. That filled the whole place where they were gathered. And the divided tongues like fire appeared among them and over their heads. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. This great wind, or the same word can be translated as breath. Breathing new life into them. And at that point, giving the gift to speak in other languages. 
probably not the way they expected the Holy Spirit to come, but how the Holy Spirit came. With this gift of the Holy Spirit, they do not stay in their room, away from everyone else. They go out and speak to the people gathered, which, remember, they're from all over the then known world and speak just as many different languages. In this moment, we hear that the Holy Spirit comes not for the insider, for those who are already part of the Jesus movement. The gifts given to the apostles are not for their own benefit. God's gifts reach outward to those outside of this immediate circle of Jesus' followers. For the gift for the disciples to speak in other languages allows for the outsiders to listen and to hear the good news that the disciples are preaching and proclaiming. For rather than each of those gathered and listening from other countries and other places being able to understand the apostles and the apostles' language, they are able to understand in each their own language. We see the Holy Spirit working in and through the diversity. Who knows if that's what the followers, the apostles, the disciples thought the coming of the Holy Spirit would mean. Today we might question and want to say that it is the followers. I mean, they're the ones who get the gift of speaking the other languages. It's about them. We might question what does this mean and try to limit the ways the Holy Spirit should work. Just like those who are around them at that time who end up questioning and saying, I think they're drunk at 9 a.m. But Peter, at this point, gets up and says, we're not drunk. And he quotes the prophet Joel, saying that the Holy Spirit will be poured out on all flesh. No matter age, no matter gender, no matter wealth or ability, the Holy Spirit works in ways beyond what we can imagine, in ways that upset our own ideas of how she should work. So we think of this. I feel like I preached Luther not long ago. We got Luther again. Luther has this saying, in, well, he uses this saying, in curvatus in se. It means turned in, curved in on oneself. So I want you to join me. We can physically do this. So I want you to hunch your shoulders forward and look down. And when you do this, you can, you're looking at your belly button and all you can see is yourself. Now open up your shoulders. And if you got space, don't hit anyone, expand out. That feels much different, doesn't it? Kind of doesn't feel quite right to be hunched over and looking inward. But when we open up, look outward, things change. And this, this, this outward feeling is what the Holy Spirit is doing with coming to the apostles, with the start of the church on Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is coming to keep the church from turning in and curving in on itself and caring only about the church. The Holy Spirit comes, yes, in ways we do not understand or would anticipate. Promoting diversity, the Holy Spirit comes to turn the Jesus movement, the church, outward. The Holy Spirit
spirit comes and blows where she will, breathing new life. Today, yes, we exclaim, Happy Birthday to the Church! But that is not all that this day is about. Today is a reminder and a call shouting, Let's go! The reminder that the church is not a building, nor is it a particular membership or group of people. Yes, the church is the people. More importantly, the church is a community of people empowered by the Holy Spirit to carry out God's mission in the world. A mission of healing, liberation, and joy. A mission of not turning inward and caring only about ourselves. Rather, a mission of opening up and turning outward to the world. So, I'm going to end with a little joke here. I heard it this week and I thought that it was really good way to think about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit does things we don't always anticipate. So, knock knock. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit interrupts what we think will happen. Amen.
Let us join together in professing our faith found in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became a truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equipped the disciples for their work, equipped us to bring the good news to all who long for you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is heard. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for the protection of lands facing destructive fire, for forestry managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We especially pray for healing and comfort for those on the prayer list. Kayla, as she waits for a heart transplant, knowing that someone's grief will give her life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Join us, God, we impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desires to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of our synod and community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Life-giving God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The 
peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. Gracious God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. 
in the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this in remembrance of me gathered into one by the holy spirit let us pray as jesus taught our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You may be seated. In coming forward for communion, we will have two stations. And this, you'll come up, um, se- sorry, fellow sidetracked moment. In the center, uh, me and one assistant will be here uh, with bread. Let us know if you need gluten-free that is available if you need it. Communion assistance on the outside and the trays. There is wine on the outside and white grape juice in the center. Know that this is God's table and all are welcome here.
I invite you to stand as you are able. Now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist us in this ministry on which we are sent forth. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this sacrament, that through the body and blood of your Son, we all may know the comfort of your abiding presence. Amen. Receive this blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation.